It's a little bit embarrassing that after living on Earth for thousands of years, human beings still haven't completely explored the oceans. There are whole regions of the sea that we've never been down to the bottom of, and there could be anything down there. There must be hundreds of species waiting to be discovered. To give underwater explorers some credit though, they have found some amazing things, as you're about to see in this video. We're starting off with quite a sad discovery, but one that offers archaeologists the chance to find out new things about the military forces of the past. It's the remains of a medieval soldier, found at the bottom of Lake Azveja in Lithuania in November 2020. The old soldier still had many of his personal possessions with him, excellently preserved by 30 feet of mud and sand. This isn't thought to have been a deliberate burial, so the question of how the soldier came to meet his end remains unsolved. He was found with his knives, his sword, his uniform, and his leather boots. The sword has helped archaeologists to give a date to the discovery, which they've estimated as being from the 16th century. Back then, the Grand Duke of Lithuania was one of the great and powerful states of Europe, joined in a union with the Kingdom of Poland and controlling territory that ran as far south as Ukraine. The soldier might have been stationed at Dubingai Castle, which today stands in ruins on the lakeside. The terrain of the world hasn't always looked the same as it does today. Areas of ice were once lush green land, and areas of land were once buried under ice. Greenland is very icy today, but in November 2020, scientists discovered an ancient lake bed hiding more than a mile below the frozen surface. The lake, which is in the northwest of the country, must have formed millions of years ago before the ice arrived. Because it's been sealed off from the air for all that time, the water might contain bacteria and other information that could tell scientists a lot about the way the world was back then. Unfortunately for them, it's currently totally inaccessible. Drilling through a mile of ice would be almost impossible, and even if a safe method could be found, the costs involved would be astronomical. So far, all the information they've been able to obtain has come from radar technology borrowed from NASA. It's nice to know that the lake is there, but it might take a while for us to reach it and find out what it's hiding. Some of the geological features that you'll find below the water are the same as the geological features you'll find above it, but sometimes they are far more impressive than their dry counterparts. In early 2018, scientists announced the discovery of the world's largest underwater cave, and when they say large, they mean enormous. The cave, which is in Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula, connects with and incorporates the flooded caverns of Dojosos and Sacatum, creating a cave system that runs on for 215 miles. Experts consider it to be the most important underwater archaeological site on the planet. Even though the connection between the two caverns is news to us, it might have been familiar to the Maya, who lived in the Yucatan Peninsula, and whose ruins are dotted all over the area. Parts of the cavern probably weren't always under the water. More than 100 artifacts have been discovered within them, some of which have been traced back to the very first settlers of the Americas. The cave might yet prove to be even bigger. It's surrounded by other underwater caverns, and archaeologists are now trying to determine whether they are also connected to the network. During the fierce maritime battles of the Second World War, the U.S. Navy sunk German U-boat 166 in the Gulf of Mexico. The vessel survived its sinking in more or less one piece, but time and nature are doing what the U.S. Navy couldn't. After meeting its fate in 1942, the U-boat was missing until it was found during a pipeline survey in 2001. Even then, after so long beneath the waves, it was still remarkably well preserved. That changed when the Deepwater Horizon oil rig disaster happened in 2010. The massive oil spill affected the microbes and bacteria living on the wrecked submarine, accelerating the disintegration process. It's thought that the oil from the explosion surrounded the vessel, allowing more aggressive types of bacteria to thrive on the hull 
and begin corroding its surfaces. There are some people who believe that efforts should be made to preserve the wreck, although many feel that as it's a Nazi vessel, it should be left to its fate. In any event, it's probably too late to save it. The damage is already too severe to bring it back to the surface. Speaking of shipwrecks, there's one that's well worth seeing at Chuk Lagoon, an atoll in the central Pacific Ocean. It's the wreck of the Japanese cargo ship Fujikawa Maru, built in 1938 and tasked with shipping cotton and silk between India and South America. The ship was requisitioned by the Japanese Navy in 1940 and served in the Second World War. In February 1944, she was battered by U.S. bombers during Operation Hailstone and sank. She went down with three Zero fighter planes and an A-6M fighter still aboard, and has since become one of the most visited wreck diving sites in the world. Today, it's covered by pink and white coral and surrounded by tuna, but many of the objects inside the shattered hull of the vessel are still in one piece. Amazingly, that includes all of the planes. If the A6M could be raised to the surface, it would be the only one of its kind still in existence. But sadly, that would be impossible without causing significant damage to the rest of the wreck. It's best left where it is. Not all the reefs you'll find underwater occur naturally. Some are artificial and are created with the intention of promoting healthy marine life or blocking the passage of ships. Even though they are always created with the best of intentions, not all of them are successful. One of the more famous examples of a failed artificial reef is Osborne Reef, which is off the coast of Fort Lauderdale in Florida, USA. Everything was going fine when the concrete jacks were driven into the seabed in 1974, but things went awry when more than two million used tires were introduced into the equation. Rather than promoting marine life and helping the environment, Osborne Reef has instead become an environmental disaster zone. The steel clips that held the tires together corroded and then disintegrated, setting the tires loose and destroying what little life had grown on and around them. To make matters worse, the loose tires drifted away and collided with natural reefs elsewhere in the area, damaging them and posing a danger to their ecosystems. Numerous cleanup attempts have been made, but to date, only around 70,000 of the 2 million tires have successfully been retrieved. Having looked at an artificial reef that failed, let's balance things out by looking at one that succeeded magnificently. It's Redbird Reef, sitting in the Atlantic Ocean not far from the coast of Slaughter Beach, Delaware, USA. This reef is a far more recent addition to the seabed having been created by the Maryland Reef Initiative in 2001. Redbird Reef is made up of an incredible array of old and unwanted vehicles, including over 800 former New York City subway cars, eight tugboats, 86 obsolete tanks from the U.S. Army, a few armored personnel carriers, and 3,000 tons of ballasted truck tires. The reef is 80 feet below the surface of the water, and covers an area of just under one and a half square nautical miles. In the first seven years after work on the reef was completed, the volume of marine life in the area increased 400 times over. It's become a fishing hotspot where black sea bass, tuna, mackerel, and flounder can be caught. Such is the incredible success of the Redbird Reef Project that there's now a waiting list of U.S. states who've applied for the next batch of retired subway cars from New York. The press sometimes gets a little carried away when it comes to writing headlines. When a series of Stone Age artifacts were found by Swedish divers in the Baltic Sea at the start of 2014, journalists began to write feverish articles about the discovery of the Swedish Atlantis. Those headlines were quite a long way from the truth. The dive site isn't an old settlement, and nothing that's been found there matches with any description of Atlantis. But it's a remarkable discovery nonetheless. The artifacts that are lurking below the waters of Hano, Skane County are approximately 11,000 years old and were probably thrown into the sea by prehistoric residents of the area when they had no further need for them. Discoveries made so far include flint tools, primitive ropes, animal horns, and a harpoon 
made from auroch bones. Aurochs have been extinct since the early 17th century. Finding so many Stone Age artifacts in one place is unusual because the people of the time tended to be nomadic. But there must have been at least a semi-permanent settlement close to here at some point in the distant past. The hunt is now on to find it. Here's a quick warning. If you find squid a little creepy, you might want to look away for a moment. There are many species of squid in the ocean, but the big fin squid is the most elusive of all of them. They never leave the deepest, darkest recesses of the ocean, and as such, they're almost never seen by humans. Only 12 confirmed sightings had ever been made in history until they were spotted close to Australia for the first time in November 2020. This wasn't a single, isolated sighting, though. Five individual big fin squids have been seen together. The strange-looking squid, with limbs that can reach 26 feet long, stay below depths of 3,000 feet where even sunlight can't reach them. Human divers wouldn't survive long down there, but diving robots can, which is how these images were obtained. These images might be as close as we ever get to seeing them with our own eyes. They almost certainly wouldn't survive a trip up to the surface of the water to say hello to us, and we wouldn't survive a trip down to their territory. Hopefully, though, through robot-guided studies, we can find out more about this unusual species and how they live. Because a lack of context makes it difficult to work out the size and scale of objects underwater, we sometimes fail to appreciate how large some coral reef formations are. We're here to give you that context. This enormous coral reef, discovered 80 miles off the coast of Cape York, Queensland, Australia in October 2020, is taller than both the Empire State Building of New York City and the Eiffel Tower in Paris, France. Even that description doesn't do it justice. Measured from the bottom to the top, the reef is 1,640 feet tall. It has the Eiffel Tower beaten by more than 600 feet. Its base is more than a mile wide. If it were above ground, it would be called a mountain. And with its steep sides and thin peak, it would be an exceptionally difficult one to climb. The fact that it was found so close to the Great Barrier Reef highlights the lack of knowledge we have about the ocean floor, even in areas that we thought we'd already investigated thoroughly. As the tip is only 130 feet below the surface, it would be possible for human divers to reach it. But it might not be wise because images and videos have shown that it's surrounded by sharks. You've heard of the idea of diving and swimming with dolphins. But have you ever heard of diving with elephants? We imagine you probably haven't. But before you get too excited, let's state the obvious. We're not talking about real, living, breathing elephants. We're talking about the impressive stone elephant statues that can be found at the Siam Bay dive site at Rakadyai, Thailand. The area was already popular with divers, but the stone elephants were added in 2006 as a new attraction. They were joined by a classic Thai temple gate, a few statues, and a giant sentry called Yak. The intended effect was to create an underwater temple for tourists to dive and swim. Though, if visitor numbers are anything to go by, the project has been a successful one. Contrary to popular belief, elephants can swim. But they're not great divers, and you wouldn't find them hanging around this far below the waves. If you want to grab a photo opportunity with an undersea elephant, this is currently the only place on Earth you'll be able to do it. During the 1960s, famous French explorer and adventurer Jacques Cousteau decided that his next project would be to create a sustainable underwater village that human beings would be able to live inside indefinitely. He built three undersea habitats in different locations around the world in preparation for building more ambitious structures. But the only one that still exists today is Pre-Continent II, off the coast of Sudan. This was a very advanced technological achievement for 1963. It contains three telephones, a television set, radios, and a library to relax inside. The six so-called Oceanauts who lived in Pre-Continent II for 30 days even had a pet parrot although the parrot's job was to alert them if the oxygen levels dropped to a level that would be dangerous to human life. 
It appeared that Cousteau's plan was working, and he was destined for success. But then he pulled the plug on his idea. His funding was coming from the petrochemical industry, and he'd started to become uneasy about their intentions. Rather than continuing to take their money, Cousteau backed away and spent the rest of his life focusing on marine conservation instead. Precontinent 2 is still watertight, and the air inside it is still theoretically breathable if anyone were able to gain entry. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you soon.